Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Plan Tip Part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us look at the next category that is mosses. So the liver warts are done, now let us talk about mosses. So these mosses also prefer moist and shady habitats. There are in mosses as well, there are around 12,000 of species that exist on this earth, which is again a huge number. These are generally non-woody plants. You do not have that wood part of the plant or you do not have those root-like structures. So here the plant body is simple, no seeds, no flowers, simple leaves cover the thin stems. Root-like structures called rhizoids are present. So even here rhizoids are present with help, which helps in anchoring and it also helps in conduction of water and nutrients through the, throughout the plant. Simple leaves are present along with thin stems. Now these leaves can perform the process of photosynthesis and therefore they are autotrophic. Now when I talk about uniqueness of mosses, what is special about mosses? So what is that unique characteristic about mosses? Like liverworts, gametophyte is the predominant stage of the life cycle of a moss. As I said, in case of liverwort, we saw that the haploid gametophyte phase was the dominant phase of the liverwort. So here also it is the similar. Here also gametophyte is the predominant stage. But in this case, gametophyte itself consists of two stages. Their gametophyte was just one gametophyte. How was gametophyte formed there? When the spores germinate, they directly formed the gametophyte. But in this case, gametophyte is divided into two stages. What are those two stages? Let us have a look. The first stage is protonema. What is protonema now? Now from the spore, earlier what was happening from spore, it was directly forming gametophyte. But now it will not be like that. So now from spore, this is the spore. From spore, a structure is formed which is called protonema. So protonema develops from spore. It is green, creeping and branched. So it is a creeping structure. It, it cannot support itself. It needs something to creep around. So it is green colored, creeping and branched structure. This is how it looks like. So here you can see the structure. So here this is the rhizoid. This is the spore case. And the second stage is the leafy stage. In the, the leafy stage will develop from the secondary protonema. So from protonema, the leafy stage will develop. Here, upright axis with spirally arranged leaves. So here you can see how the leaves are spirally arranged. So in case of liver warts, the spores will germinate directly to form gametophyte. There is no intermediate stage. But in this case, the leaves, the spores will form protonema protonema and this protonema will then again form the leafy stage so the leafy stage is the final gametophyte so this leafy stage is the final gametophyte now this protonema is again divided into two steps first is primary protonema and then secondary protonema. However, we will not get into the detail of primary and secondary protonema. But this presence of protonema is something which is unique in moss, mosses and it was not present in liverworts. Okay, so let us look at some examples of mosses. Funaria, sphagnum, common hair cap moss. So these are some of the examples of mosses. So if you look at funaria, what is this? This portion is the capsule. What is this? This is seta, the stalk-like structure which actually takes the nutrition to the capsule. Now what are these? These are nothing but the leaves-like structure. And these are the rhizoids. Again, if you look at the structure of sphagnum, sphagnum I mentioned it before also it is used as a very good packing material dried sphagnum is a very useful packing material so here again you can see you have 
a branch like structure in the middle you see this thick like thick structure this is the archegonial branch and these branches which come out they are the antheridia branch so this is the archegonial branch and these branches which come out they are the antheridium branch so antheridium branch is nothing but the male gametophyte and the archegonial branch is nothing but the female gametophyte and the third one is common hair and the third example is common hair cap moss so these are some of the examples of mosses so now let us look at the reproduction in case of moss if i talk about asexual reproduction even hair fragmentation happens where stem or leaf from the moss accidentally break off can regenerate it to form a new plant so any part of the plant if it is uh, it, it comes out of the plant it can give rise to a new plant and that is the concept of fragmentation the next one is budding we have studied about budding right well we were discussing about the different types of reproduction budding is a, a phenomenon which is very commonly seen in hydra so what happens here a new individual is formed as an outgrowth of parent so in in the body of the parent a small outgrowth will be appear now that outgrowth will start growing and when it becomes mature it separates from the parent's body and form a new organism so that is the concept of budding so in hydra also you remember this is how hydra looked like let us suppose if this was hydra now in this this hydra a small outgrowth develops like this and then this small outgrowth will gradually start growing like this and then this will separate out from here and it will form a new organism so that is how budding took place so this budding phenomenon also happens in case of mosses where a small outgrowth is seen on the parent plant and then that outgrowth starts growing as a new plant and finally separates out from the parent talking about the sexual reproduction in mosses sexual reproduction resembles the leafy liverworts it is similar to the leafy liverworts as i said appearance wise also the leafy liverworts resemble a lot with the mosses so here we have male and female sex organs separately so male and female sex organs are present at apex of the shoots so at the tip of the shoots they are present so how would be the sexual life cycle of uh, the mosses there will be a gametophyte so here also gametophyte is the dominant phase that means gametophyte is the plant basically so this gametophyte will form male gametes and female gametes now the male gametes and the female gametes will undergo fusion as a result of fusion zygote will be formed now these zygote will grow to form sporophyte this sporophyte will actually release the spores which are present in the capsule of the sporophyte these spores will then germinate to form the protonema protonema will further grow to form the gametophyte it is already there so basically this gametophyte is nothing but the leafy stage right so this is the sexual life cycle of mosses so we can see that sporophyte in mosses is more elaborate than that in liverworts why is it so because in case of mosses the sporophyte have got a more distinct structures so with the three different parts so the sporophyte is more elaborate than that in liverworts however the dominant phase of the life cycle still remains to be the gametophyte So this is how the life cycle of mosses look like. So here you can see these are the mature gametophytes. This is a male gametophyte and this is a female gametophyte. So male gametophyte will give the male gametes, female gametophyte will give the female gametes. 
Now what will happen? The male gametes and the female gametes will undergo fusion. This is how it will happen. So in the this is the male gamete to fight and this is the female gametophyte. So the sperms from this will enter into the female gametophyte where it will fuse with the egg cell. Now once the egg cell, once the fusion takes place, zygote will be formed. This is how. So zygote will be formed in the female gametophyte. Now this zygote will start growing to form the embryo and this embryo will further grow to form the sporophyte. Now inside the sporophyte we again have three different structures that is capsule, seta and food. Inside the capsule we have the spores. Now these spores are then released. Now when the spores are released, this is how the spores are released from the capsule. See this is the capsule and the spores are released. Now these spores will then germinate to form the protonema which is the initial stage. The protonema will then again gradually grow to form the gametophyte. So this is how the life cycle of a moss is. Now as I said, mosses and leafy, leaf, leafy leafworts share a lot of things in common. However, there are some differences between them. So let us quickly see what are the differences between mosses and leafy leafworts. Well, when I talk about the leafy leafworts, oil bodies are present in their cells. So if you look at the leafy leafworts, each cell will have some oil bodies. But in mosses, there are no oil bodies present. Presence of lobes in leaves. So here if you talk about the leaves, in case of leafy leaverworts, there are lobes present in the leaves. But in the case of mosses, there are no lobes. In leafy leaverworts, leaves are arranged in two or three rows. See, this is how it is arranged. It is like this, 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 this. So it is arranged in a row. But in case of mosses, the leaves are spirally arranged. So here you can see how the leaves are arranged. So the arrangement of leaves are also different. So these are some of the characteristics based on which you can actually differentiate between a leafy river wart and a moss. Now since we spoke about gametophyte and sporophyte quite often in this topic of bryophytes, let us quickly recap whatever we studied about a gametophyte and a sporophyte. So let us have a quick comparison. Gametophyte is the haploid stage, whereas sporophyte is the diploid stage. Now how are they formed? Gametophyte give rise to gametes, that is why the name gametophyte. Sporophyte gives rise to spores. Gametophyte supports the sporophyte. Sporophyte is dependent on the gametophyte. As you can see here, the sporophyte lies above the gametophyte. So it depends on gametophyte for support as well as for nutrition. Gametophyte is the dominant stage in non-vascular plants. Sporophyte is the dominant stage in vascular plants. So what are non-vascular and vascular? Non-vascular plants are those which do not have the specialized vascular tissue for conduction of water and minerals. And that is why they, they are very short plants. So examples of non-vascular plants would be thallophytes and bryophytes. So they are all non-vascular plants. So in such non-vascular plants, the dominant stage is gametophyte. Whereas in other plants, for example, the flowering plants or the gymnosperms, in all those cases, the dominant stage is sporophyte. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.